Hello everyone, a very very good morning to all of you. Welcome to Study IQ IAS English. So dear students, in today's class, we are going to talk about a battle which is nothing but a tale of treachery. A battle which is nothing short of defining the journey of the East India Company in the Indian subcontinent. A battle which changed the fortunes of not just the British but also the fortunes of the Indian princes in the history of modern India. So yes, you guessed it right. The battle today which we are going to talk about, that is the Battle of Plassey, a tale of treachery and double cross. So we will find out that who did the double cross and who did this treachery, what was the reason behind that and what were the outcomes of this accident. So let us start the session without any further delay. And why did I call it as accident? In fact, this must be understood in such way because after this particular thing, this was not actually a pre-planned incident. This was not actually a pre-planned uh, battle, right? This was just as an outcome of the outcome of the incidents which were collectively resulting into the battle at a place called Palashi in uh, Bangla. However, the British, they termed it as Plassey. All right. So let's get started without any further delay. And first of all, before starting, let me tell you that you have got a great opportunity that today only you have got this grand optional sale, which is valid only till the 25th of June. So what do you have to do that if you are choosing any of these optionals, which are being provided here, including PSIR, sociology, geography, philosophy, anthropology, public administration, history or Hindi Sahitya. So among any of these literature, uh, any of these optionals, if you are choosing any of these subjects, then you have got a golden opportunity to get the guidance under the most esteemed faculties at the platform of Study IQ. So what do you have to do? You just have to use this code ASR live. Okay, just use this code ASR live and you will get this Right. You will get this entire optional syllabus covered just in the cost of rupees 13,999. Right, 999. Sorry. So only 14,000 rupees is going to be the cost if you are using this code ASR Live. Remember that. Right. Apart from that, you can also get yourself enrolled. You, you can also get yourself enrolled for our ongoing batches. In fact, there are limited seats only, and the batches are already started on the 19th of June. So do not delay it. Otherwise, what happens? The train will just pass on. And let's get back to the topic. So guys, first of all, now talking about this particular battle, the Battle of Plassey. Battle of Plassey that was fought on 23rd of June, 1757. In fact, today is the uh, 21st probably. Today is 21st of June. 23rd of June. That means this is the time exactly 20th June, 21st June. These are the times when the air in the Plassey that, you know, blew separately, that blew differently. And why did this air, why did this air was, why did this air actually blow differently? Because the conditions in Plassey were not exactly on the lines as the British would have wanted it to be. A new Nawab of Bengal whose name was Nawab Siraj ud -Dawla. Nawab Siraj ud -Dawla. A new Nawab was placed at the throne of Bengal. He was just a 20 years old, 20 years old man, young and very much rash, very much aggressive. He did not like that English company, they should start fortification of their settlements. They should be enforcing the Nawab to give them several relaxations in the trade. He was not of the opinion that only the English should give, get all the privileges and no other companies should be allowed to interact with the rulers. He had his own opinions. So what did they do? He actually discarded all the English objections and removed every type of 
every type of discriminatory concessions which were given to the English. Rather, he provided these concessions to every trader concerned. And this was not acceptable to the English people. So, what happened that on the 23rd of June, the troops of the English East India Company, the British East India Company, led by Robert Clive, came up against the forces of Sirajud Dola, the last Nawab of Bengal and his French allies. Remember this, French allies. Eventually, Robert Clive had won this battle and, uh, you know, established the British East India Company as the greatest political power in the India. However, was it that simple? Was it just having this angle that there was a battle and Clive won it? Or there was something else? Let us find out. So, when we talk about the context of the war, let me tell you that during the mid of the 18th century, as the Mughal Empire was crumbling, the Bengal, Awadh, Hyderabad, all these were, all these were gaining their autonomy because of the weakening Mughal Empire as these were the successor states in the Mughal rule. What does mean, what does it, uh, what does it mean by the successor states? That means these states were directly emanated from the central Mughal authority. These were directly the descendants of the or successor states of the Mughal areas. Okay. So, that is why they are called successor states. Now, what happened? Basically, now there was the collapse of the native Indian power and the European companies, they attempted to put their own political races, to their own political ambitions through the, through the local politics of Indian subcontinent. And not just that, East India Company was not the only one. Even the French East India Company was there. Even the Dutch were there. In fact, the entire time period, let me tell you, from the 1740s up to 1763, the entire time period of almost quarter of a decade that went into the struggle amongst these companies, the European companies, mainly the English East India Company, the French East India Company and the Dutch East India Company. So, all these three companies, they kept on fighting. Very good morning, Bulbul. They kept on fighting. Okay. And the most decisive battle that would be coming later on. However, the most defining battle that was the Battle of Plassey. The most outstanding where a small troop led by Robert Clive defeated a huge army of Nawab of, Nawab of Bengal. Okay. So, after, you know, the British had won the Karnatak wars, Sirajud Dawla, he, who was the Nawab of Bengal, became concerned about the British, right, Britishers growing influence in India and the company's officials frequently abused their trading privileges, which had a negative impact on the, on the Nawab's finances. Now, what happened? Remember that the first Karnatak war that started in the year 1740, the second Karnatak war, the second Karnatak war that would be starting off later on in the year 1746. Okay. So, basically, these Karnatak wars, you know, these Karnatak wars, they were nothing but the extension of the ongoing struggle between Britain and France on the European land. So, here also these two powers were struggling against each other. And when the British established themselves as the leading power, after the result of the Second Karnatak War, when they were successful in making their own favorite, their own favorite rulers sitting on the throne of Hyderabad as well as the Karnatak region. Okay. So, now the British had the very much, very high confidence that now they could do the same for the Bengal also. They wanted somebody to sit on the throne of Bengal who would be who would be favorable to the british benefits rather than rather than disregarding disregarding their interests so that is why they were looking for somebody they were looking for some opportunity and this opportunity that would come in the form of the battle of plassey now let me tell you that uh, without nawab's consent 
the British were trying to fortify their settlements in the Bengal region. Particularly the areas around the Fort Williams, the areas around the Fort William, that is the major point of the Calcutta, the Kolkata, that was known by the name Calcutta in those days. Good morning, Prasad. Very good morning. So what happened that British, they were fortifying their settlement at the Fort William and Nawab Sirajud Daula was strictly against any type of fortification. He had clearly issued a warning to the English as well as to the French. The French settlements, remember the name, French settlements that were located at Chandranagar. Okay, Chandranagar. So the French, they obliged, they obliged, they did not, they did not continue their fortification uh, exercises. Basically, their fortification, the construction of fortification was stopped. However, the British denied the orders of the Nawab and continued their construction of the fort around the Fort William. Now, this enraged Nawab Sirajud Daula. He was a young and dash fellow, right? So, he was enraged and he took a procession. He took a procession marching towards the British settlements, right? British settlements where he would be raising down the Qasim Bazar as well as he would be capturing the even the Calcutta, even the Calcutta. Okay. So, what happened? That when he marched to the, to the Fort Williams where he grabbed 146 Britons, that means British soldiers and imprisoned them in a cramped space where 123 of them perished. Okay, so these are the stories as referred by, right, as referred by the British historians. And they say that in the response, Robert Clive was dispatched to Bengal to help the British maintain their grip there. Okay, so he offered Mir Zafar kindred in the exchange for his treachery of the Nawab of Bengal. All right, everyone. So basically, the things which were responsible for the Battle of Plassey, those things might include what? The misuse of the trading privileges by the East India Company. Remember that the privileges were given to East India Company. They were including Dastak. Okay. Dastak was basically a free trading pass. Okay. Free trading pass. What free? Duty free trading pass. Okay. Under which the British had, they had no need to pay any type of duties. But they were using it or misusing it. They were misusing it for the personal, for the personal benefit. Okay. Then denial of the royal authority of Bengal. As I told to you that the British repeatedly ignored, okay, repeatedly ignored the warnings of Nawab ignored the warnings of Nawab. Qasim Bajar raid that was done by Nawab of Bengal and the Calcutta capture that was done. So basically what happened? That Nawab of Bengal, Sirajud Daula, he raided on Qasim Bajar. Qasim Bajar that was basically another settlement factory of the British East India Company. After raiding the Qasim Bajar and rupturing it, basically, right, he did not just capture, he ruptured, he actually destroyed everything. And also he captured Calcutta, the major fort of the, or the major town of the British East India Company. This was the condition when Robert Clive was, who was actually present at Madras, he was sent to Calcutta via the Bay of Bengal route using the English naval ships right and he reached there after that what happened he actually fought a small battle also against the nawab of bengal and unwillingly unwillingly nawab of bengal he had to sign he had to sign a treaty in the month of february 1757 that was called as the ali nagar treaty or also known as the Calcutta Treaty, Alinegar Treaty or also known as Calcutta Treaty. 
but let me tell you that this treaty was not it was not the ultimate result of uh, this you know little struggle basically this was the beginning of a greater struggle the date remember that in the month of right in the month of june in the month of june probably most probably on the 20th right 20th or 21st of the june remember the dates 2021st the time that was 2021st of june in the 1756 where the black hole tragedy black hole tragedy is often regarded as an example of the barbarian attitude of the indian rulers in the british approach of the history okay however the various historians in india they disagree on the number of casualties or some of them even decline this fact that there was any incidence called as the black hole tragedy okay where where the hundred of a hundred plus soldiers were just pushed into a small chamber a small cabin of a prison and uh, they succumbed due to the suffocation they succumbed to the death due to the suffocation now so jagat said clive therefore secretly offered to make one of the sirat's army commanders mir zafar the new nawab of bengal if siraj was defeated in the battle so now british east india company started playing the double cross games started playing the treachery games they approached the family of jagat set okay the family of jagat set that family was an extremely rich family in bengal in fact one of the wealthiest family not just in bengal but in the entire country who were lending the loans to mughal emperor to the bengal nawab to the east india company they were so fabulously wealthy okay so british east india company and particularly clive he approached the house of jagat set he actually offered him some benefits in the trade and at the same time they included mir zafar in their planning where mir zafar was offered that he would be made the next nawab of bengal because mir zafar also right also had this dream earlier had this dream earlier as well so after that what happened that this mir zafar mir zafar he came as the leading figure in the planning of east india company against nawab sirajuddaula now let me tell you that neither nawab sirajuddaula was a hero nor mir zafar was a villain but we must not categorize these people in the 18th century as per the standards of the today's today's analysis but we must understand the conditions the people who were participating in the war why were they participating what was the reason behind that so who were the participants so first of all let me tell you that clive robert clive he had 3000 almost 3000 strong army including 2100 remember this number and those all who have joined the session live prasad uh, akhilesh priya ashwini and bulbul everyone a very good morning so remember this number 2100 indian soldiers were there and only 800 european soldiers were there only 800 now you will say that will you say that these 2100 indian soldiers were they were they treacherous to the bengal nawab were they anti national sort of something not at all because in that time there was no such concept okay they were just doing their job they were fighting for a particular army which was paying them which was paying them simple so <clears throat> later on what happened this army also included the first madras european regiment and the 600 crown troops from 39th regiment and on the 20, 22nd of june the, at 6 am the army crossed the bhagirathi river crossed the bhagirathi river to the east bank using the accompanying flotilla of the boats which carried the supplies other participants apart from the company soldiers they included they included the french troops also remember 
we often ignore this fact that even the French were present to fight the battle against the English on behalf of the Nawab of Bengal. Similarly, Marathas, they had also, they had also sent their soldiers, sent their supplies to aid the English, right? However, this is disputed that up to which extent did these additional contributors affect the battle, but it is obviously not disputed that these were the belligerents in this battle. Now, if we talk about, right, if we talk about, uh, just a second, if we talk about the other no, no, issues related to this battle, that what was the plan, what was the outline of the battle, so just have a look on this map, you will get the idea. You can see here the river, okay, flowing towards the Bay of Bengal. Now, the army of uh, Mir, right, army of the Nawab Sirajud Dola, led by Mir Madan, led by Raja Durlabh Ram, led by Yar Lutf Khan, and led by Mir Zafar Khan. These four sections of the army of Sirajud Dola were arranged in the half, you know, in the crescent shape, crescent shape. This is the crescent shape okay and here you can see the the kelprik ghat coat and grab basically the four smaller segments of the british army this was the mango grove mango grove means a garden of the mango trees and this is the place called as plasi the, right plasi basically that was the palash tree then there were the camp right there was the camp of Sirajud Daula having the reserve army as well so Sirajud Daula had a huge army huge army English they had only this much they had only this much however this entire section Raja Durlabh Rai Lutf Khan Mir Zafar right this entire section simply denied to denied to cooperate not just that Mir Zafar, in fact, offered his services to, to the armies of Clive, to the armies of Clive, okay. So, that means the British, they got an upper hand, but let me tell you that when you are brave, even the nature starts favoring you. When you are brave, even the nature favors you and same happened with Robert Clive. There was the outpour, there was the downpour of the torrential rains, heavy, you know, heavy rainfall was there and the matchlock guns, the matchlock guns which the armies of Sirajud Daula had, they were simply clogged, they were clogged. Whereas the quick reactive, the quick action English forces, they had safeguarded their, you know, their guns and after the rain that was uh, receded, that was uh, stopped, the English gun started firing again, whereas the Indian, the you know, guns of Nawab of Bengal, they were simply out of service. Now, that will be the defining moment as remember here, right, remember that basically the guns, right, at the daybreak of 23rd June, Siraju Dola's army marched out of the Plassey encampment and took up the battle position in the rough quarter circle around the English. The French troops with the four cannon occupied the mound around the larger tank about half a mile from the English army. Between the larger tank and the river were the two heavy guns manned by Indian gunners. And behind these guns, Mir Madan Khan was there who was the only faithful commander of Sirajud Daula's army with 5,000 cavalry and 7,000 foot soldiers all right now what happened basically the rest of the Siraju Dola's army as i told you the rest of the Siraju Dola's army that was formed in the crescent shape and these three people these three people simply they did a double cross okay they did a double cross okay so that's why right Mir Madan right sorry Mir Madan he was the he was the only faithful commander only faithful commander okay and these three people right these three people they were right one two and three they were the 
treacherous people. Now, if we talk about the numbers, so basically, just remember one thing, 45,000 soldiers, they were there in the army of Nawab. Now, when the opening cannonade was there, that means the fight of, fight of uh, cannons, okay, was there, a crash of thunder at the noon just stopped the right, torrential downpour, okay, so heralded or led to, led to a torrential downpour of the rain that lasted half an hour. In half an hour of rainfall, the British artillery quickly covered their cannons and ammunitions with the tarpaulins, okay. But the Sirajud Dola, he could not do that. He could not cover his, his ammunitions, his guns and anything. Result, assuming that Clive's cannon were also out of the action, it was met with the withering storm of fire. So, Sirajud Dola and his army thought that that even the guns of Robert Clive might not be working, but he was completely surprised when the cannons of Clive's army, they started blazing fire. They started blazing fire. All right. Now, the enemy withdrew and Siraj, who distrusted his generals and had already been warned of the impending defeat by his astrologer. Remember that there was an astrologer who had already, you know, uh, he had forecasted that Sirajud Dola will be defeated and in fact he will be cheated by some of his most trustworthy commanders and that's why that's why when he saw that his commanders were not fighting in the battle he was completely he was completely illusioned and he lost his confidence ultimately he was he was captured and killed by Mir Zafar and his son Mir Madan. Okay. So the result was basically result was that Siraj fled on a fast camel. His demo, demoralized army followed the suit. And when the British entered the enemy camp about 5 pm, they found it abandoned. They found it abandoned. Now the question arises that what were the reasons for the British victory in the Battle of Plassey? The reason was the biggest reason was. The treachery, the treachery, the double cross of Mir Zafar, who went on the side of the English led by Robert Clive. Second reason that was the superior artillery capacities, the superior artillery capacity of the English forces as they had, as they had the better cannons, better guns, which could be, which could be, uh, you know, adjusted at varying angles which were lightweight and quick, they were lightweight and quick to be moved from one place to the other place. Also, they were compact in the size, but their barrel was, their barrel was firing heavier grenades. At the same time, let me tell you that the English, the English version of the cannons, they were able to fire at least, at least Per shot, right, per shot was fired, per gunshot, it was like, you know, uh, within half a minute or so. That means within a minute, two to three shots were possible to be fired. Whereas the Indian guns, they took around, they took around 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes to prepare for a single, single grenade shot. So that means it was very much slow. If, if we talk about the Indian cannons, they were very slow and the English cannons were rapid. They were rapid firing systems and that's why the Indian armies were completely, completely troubled by this type of cannon. Now, apart from that, if we talk about the other reason, the very efficient, very efficient commanding skills, okay, commanding skills of Clive. So remember that we must not take the credit where it's due because Robert Clive, he was a very efficient commander, extremely diplomatic, extremely strategic and very, very brave as well as courageous. He had not just the, not just led the army from the front, rather he had already, you know, made such a plot, such a plot where 
the entire setup of this battle was pre-decided where the people who were cheaters they were you know they were preemptively picked from the picked up from the army of nawab so clive played the game strategically diplomatically and bravely against the nawab of bengal apart from that if we talk about the another region so you can see this particular uh, cannon this particular cannon was actually the french cannon cannon of french the french army i do not understand why exactly whenever they supported any indian ruler their defeat was inevitable their defeat was fixed why basically french they fought they they fought you know not with their full devotion sometimes the you know the indian uh, indian rulers or the indian armies they were over dependent upon the french skills and which was already known to the british they knew the french formation of the army the french pattern of the fight and they knew the strategies which would, would which would be deployed by the french so very effectively they defeated the french almost every time they fought a battle right now and last but not the least one of the biggest reason i can say that even <coughs> the policies of the policies right the policies and unpopularity unpopularity of siraj that was another big reason because sirajuddaula he was not at all a popular figure in his own court in his own kingdom people did not like him otherwise they would not have they would not have gone against his rule we can say that there might be the petty interests but we can also understand that there must be some sort of harassment all as well going on under the rule of under the rule of sirajuddaula that's why the basically the, the people of his court chose the camp of the enemy now moving further <clears throat> if we talk about uh, the accomplishments taken by robert clive guys robert clive he became famous as the clive of india he became a super fabulous rich of right he became very affluent very very affluent when he returned back to england he had a property of almost more than almost 4 lakh pounds in that time period the coins were the coins were released to commemorate this success in the battle of plassey okay as you can see the robert clive robert clive is a shown sitting on the elephant where the elephant symbolizes the indian powers indian authority and here as you can see that robert clive is basically robert clive is basically having an indian nawab who is bending in front of bending in front of robert clive to just to show the supremacy of the english authority under the leadership of clive so that is how the things were commemorated by the british in their own country now if we talk about uh, the aftermath if we talk about the effect of this battle the result of this battle we saw that this was basically the opening gate this was basically the opening gate opening gate for the british authority or british expansion for the british expansion okay and after this battle there would be another defining moment coming 7 years later fought in the bihar region but in connection with the same bengal nawab story that means the story will be same the nawab will not be the same obviously but dear let me tell you that after we talk about this particular battle so the initial the first incident that was that bengal that right the treasury of bengal came under the control indirect control of the british meer zafar was made the next nawab who had to pay the indemnities to british as the british had lost their resources as per their own claim in this particular battle they got the complete monopoly as the other 
trading benefits given to the other companies were completely abolished. French were completely ousted from the Bengal region. Why? Because the French, they will have their only settlement at Chandranagar and that will be at the mercy of the British. And due to the, due to the gaining of Bengal and its uh, opulent wealth, the British were able to finance their war efforts going on in the Deccan, their war efforts going on with the French in the European land. And at the same time, the English East India Company, particularly the officers of the East India Company, they started amassing, accumulating the huge wealth, leading to their personal fortunes, right, exponential growth of their personal fortunes. So basically, that led to that led to the onset of the British rule in the Indian subcontinent, as we say. And in the today's session, I think we have clearly understood the significance of the Battle of Plassey and why was this a tale of treachery. And in the next next session, next uh, part of the series, we will be starting a new series for all of you, where we will be talking about those historical treaties those historical treaties which have given the shape to the today's india the modern map of india was drawn by those historical treaties so that will be the series that we will be starting from the next lecture onwards so guys that is all in today's session and i hope that if you are preparing for the upsc examination now i hope that you are all very very serious about it so do not delay or do not extend your preparation because every single day is very important in your preparation journey so just do one thing that if you are preparing either in the english medium or in the hindi or bilingual medium you can simply get yourself enrolled in our prelims to interview program which is a very very special program because it provides you a wholesome preparation not just for the prelims but also for your mains as well as interview stages right so in those stages as well we will be guiding you and what do you have to do you just have to download the application select your course apply one code that you have asr live okay this is the code which will be giving you the maximum discount the maximum cost efficient fees will be there and that will be just rupees 29999 so do not delay it let's meet in the classroom till then Take care everybody, bye-bye and have a great day ahead. Thanks a lot for watching it and let's meet tomorrow. Jai Hind.